Rejoice and be glad. Today is the 12th of September, 2019. Rejoice and be glad for today the Lord has made. This is a video that made by the codesearcher.com. And Paul the Apostle, and he says, I bet you don't know this about, about Paul the Apostle. Well, I think I do. This is a book, The Apostle Paul by Dan Pollock. Mr. Pollock sat there, I contacted the, the book publisher, and with written permission, I got authorization that I could verbally do YouTube by reading the book of Mr. Pollock over the internet chapter by chapter verse by verse and I went through and you see there's 38 30 uh, 36 I'm sorry no 38 I was right 30 chapter 36 38 videos on the Apostle Paul so I got to read who Paul the Apostle was, and how his father uh, sent him and got, gave him uh, teachings of Gamal and all the Talmud and all that, and how his father was, was so proud of him, and how he sat there and uh, was good at it. And uh, we see then in, in uh, Acts 7 that Paul the Apostle has accused Stephen, and they are now, the judgment is to stone him because he's preaching a heresy. Uh, 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 this Nazarene gospel that uh, Stephen has. And Stephen is stoned to death. And the garments are placed at, whoop, yeah, Saul of Tarsus. So Saul of Tarsus starts off as a bad guy. Having taken an innocent blood of Stephen and just murdered Stephen. So we see now that Paul, it's, uh, I should say Saul, sits there, is full of wrath, and is full of anger, and uh, he sits there, goes to the Sanhedrin, gets papers from them, saying that he can go to Damascus, and he finds any more like Stephen preaching this gospel of the Nazarene, he can arrest him and bring him to the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem. So on his way he goes, and on the road to Damascus, Guess what? He sits here and meets up with Jesus Christ. And he asks Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And we see the proverbial adage of um, Saul being taken down from his high horse, is what people say. Myself, I just see Jesus humbly taking and bringing him down from the horse to have a discussion with him. And that's, like I said, that's where the discussion, truth comes out of discussion. Tools of the devil are arguments and uh, debates and uh, maybe even challenges. Maybe I'll have to add that to there because we sit here having discussions. We're looking for the edification of the body of Christ, not ourselves. Not what we've learned, not what, not what we think, but what does the scripture show? And so Saul of Tarsus has sit there and has been taken down and is blinded. And he gets into Damascus and it takes Ananias, who is fearful of Saul, because Saul has put people to death. Many of the, of the early church were put to death. So we see Saul's reputation there. We see also that Ananias, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, telling him that Saul is a chosen vessel. Sounds kind of like... Uh, Nebuchadnezzar with the uh, the five kingdoms, uh, the two that were past and the five yet to come for the ages to be. And we've passed through the two of Rome and we're getting ready for the, the, the uh, fifth and last age, which could lead to the, the eighth being the one of the seven that was previously before it. Could that be uh, Babylon re returning? One world government? I don't know, Jonathan, but we sit here and see that his sight is returned. Ananias goes and lays hands on him and his sight comes back. And now that he has sight, he goes into uh, Jerusalem to preach the gospel that he now understands, having seen Christ, the Christ crucified that uh, Paul and the rest are talking about. But Jesus takes him up because they want to now stone him. So he sends Saul down to Saudi Arabia for three years. 
In that three-year time, Jesus gave to Saul seven mysteries that nobody else had. Those were mysteries that sit there was hid with God. We're talking about the snatching, the the uh, the, bri uh, the body of Christ. We're talking about the age of grace and the, the preaching that uh, uh, Saul, who will now become Paul the Apostle. So when Paul sits here and is finally taught, he comes back up and goes up into the doing his preaching into the towns and highways and byways. And he's preaching the kingdom of grace. The kingdom of heaven was with Peter. Peter sits there, they, after they sit there, and Paul and Barnabas, he picks up, he sits there and has this uh, arrangement with Barnabas, and they preach the, the, the kingdom of grace, that by Christ alone, that uh, uh, through the work of the cross, not of works, but of yourself, not of the law, the, all the law did was condemn the Jew, that uh, Peter, like I said, uh, talked about that uh, they could not bear the, the the weight of the of the of uh, the Moses with the Ten Commandments. David committed uh, lust and then murder, so he didn't keep the law. So the law was a uh, conviction. It told the Jew, "You're convicted of sin. You need a savior," and that's what Jesus did. Jesus came to take the law, fulfill the law, not do away with it. Fulfill the law. So that we then could go into the age of grace. And that's what we're under. The grace, not under the law. Either by Talmud or by uh, the Ten Commandments. What we have is the grace that Paul taught. Christ crucified. And that is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Jonathan. That's where Christ is crucified according uh, to the scriptures. Shed his blood. Okay. Was buried and rose again. That blood goes back to Genesis. It goes back to Cain and Abel. Abel was the one who had the lamb, which is a symbol of Christ. He shed the blood, the lamb's blood, which is Jesus, which was on the cross. So God demands blood. Cain had no blood, and God rebuked uh, Cain's offering. He accepted Abel's. And what happened? Cain rose up and killed his brother. Why? Because the God of this world is, your, is, the, is the, the devil. And he was a murderer and a liar from the beginning. So we can see that uh, Paul is coming up with a new gospel. It's one that Jesus had hid. He knew that the house of Israel was going to reject him, refuse to accept. After his crucifixion, he rises. He spends 40 days like he did in the wilderness, uh, being tempted of Satan. And now, after 40 days, he rises up because they refuse to repent and call upon him as their Messiah. So he puts them on a hold. And you see in Acts, it slowly slips away from Peter and Jerusalem and goes to Paul and Barnabas and the gospel of grace that we, not of works, but by grace through the blood shed on the cross, through Romans 3.25, that we, having faith in that blood, receive the righteousness of God Almighty. It's that righteousness that we now are able to enter into the kingdom of heaven prepared. So the gospel that uh, Paul is talking is not about uh, the Torah. It's not talking about the Talmud. What he's talking about is a brand new gospel that was hid, Jonathan. And that is the gospel of grace. It is everything has to do with that blood as Abel's blood called out to God? What do you think the blood of God is doing to the world? We are part spirit. We have a soul and body. The body rejects what we hear, but the spirit hears the blood of Christ. And that is what calls us to Christ, not ourselves. And I'm going to do that tomorrow when I have a um, live stream tomorrow. It's the call versus listen or uh, call versus hear the blood. It's the blood that calls to us, not us calling to him. It has everything to do with the, with Jesus dying, Yeshua, the, uh, on the cross that his blood paid for our sins. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sin. Now, hopefully I'm not, 
I'm just being strong in what I'm trying to say. I'm hope it's not a, against you. It's not against. I'm looking for the truth, Jonathan. I hope you you can see that. I understand the 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 Torah. It's the word of God. But you understand the Book of Moses and that. If I go to Matthew ten five, these twelve, okay, Jesus gave a command and sent forth not n o t not to go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Israel was supposed to be first, Jonathan, from what I read. If they were supposed to be first, then they should have been looking with the prophets, understanding that even um, who was it, uh, Pontius Pilate. No, Herod, the king, who was on the throne when the wise men came, and he asked of his uh, seers uh, where, and it was the town of Bethlehem. And what did he do? Instead of uh, going there to pay homage to Christ, he sent his soldiers to kill from the two years down to newborn. So he, he went to kill Jesus. Well, it, that's been way ever since he was walking on the earth. They, people have wanted to get rid of him because he is the truth, the light, the life, and the way. So if I sit here and I read correctly, what you're seeing is that at the end there, it's like you're saying, well, what? We should go back to the Torah? That we should live under the Torah? That's not what Paul was telling us. Paul was telling us that we've been given grace to the Gentiles. And in that, he sits there, he comes, finally gets to the point where we sit there and we understand there's only one body, and that one body is Jesus Christ. That if there is one body, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Either you believe in the blood shed on the cross for our sins and you have accepted him and opened your heart to receive the, the uh, sealing of the Holy Spirit in you or you're still there and you're rejecting Christ just like the Jews rejected him when they said after 40 days he ended up having to leave because they rejected uh, uh, repenting. They didn't want to repent. What about the Talmud? Well, that's the teaching of men. So yeah, Jesus was against that. Those are the teachings of men compared to the Torah. He said that you had the Torah and you had Jesus right there in front of Nicodemus. And Nicodemus could not see. Because what did Jesus say to Nicodemus? Nicodemus said you have to be born again. You're spiritually dead, Israel. So what do we see in, in uh, Daniel 9? Who is the great falling away? That great falling away is Israel. They still do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And the Noahide law? Well, if you believe in the time of Jacob's trouble that Jesus is the Messiah, then Orthodox Jews, using the Noahide law, they get to chop your head off because you call Jesus the Messiah. And they sit there are totally against it. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, you know what? We've got trouble in this in this world and everybody wants to be right but nobody wants to have a discussion i understand what you're saying there i've read the book this book by john paul tells me everything paul said if you didn't work you shouldn't eat I, that's completely different from the from those who are pastors and everything else the joel osteens and and the, uh, the kenneth copelands and the, uh what's her name uh paula white benny hen all these who sit there make millions of dollars and Jesus started with what? The clothes that he had on him? And they gambled for that. Who would win it? We have things that need to be straightened out, but they sit there going back to the Torah. Paul is not talking about the Torah. Paul is talking about the grace, the given. We have God who took our place, the substitute, our place, the propitiation, Romans 3.25, that Romans uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Thank God, Father, give, give me some patience. Slow down. Let me sit here and talk with my brother. Let's have a discussion. Did we see it? Yes, the Talmud and the, the Torah. Both of them, half and half. They had half right, half wrong. But Paul's teaching isn't about the law. Paul's teaching is about grace. It is by grace, not through work. The work, uh, it is a gift of God. Christ went to the cross for us, to die for us, to take our sins away from us, to blot out our sins. If we sit there and we take that grace, 
Then we sit there, it's like the old horse, you know, you've got a gifted horse. Well, you don't look the horse in the mouth when, when the person's there. Accept the gift. It's not of works. Accept it. Instead of people, oh no, you gotta have water baptism, and you gotta, uh, you gotta have the law, you gotta be circumcised, uh, you gotta keep the Ten Commandments. I agree. There's so many things out there that are incorrect. Grace is what Paul is teaching. That's what he was given a dispensation. And if I sit there and I, uh, let me do one more thing and bring up another page. Sorry, it just hit me. The Spirit just spoke. Let me go over here. To my, oh, where are my, where's my, oh, my, up here, there we go, welcome page. This is my welcome page for Yeshua. Salvation is why I chose that name, because that's what God sent. God sent salvation, not judgment, John uh, 12. Judgment is of the Father. I speak the word, word which was my father. It is he who gives me the word. He who is the author of that word that uh, sits there and, uh, yeah, gives us the, uh, uh, the, the, well, the judgment will come. Jesus did not come to judge. Dispensation of Paul. There is four times dispensation, which is nothing more to me than steward. Paul was made a steward. First Corinthians 9, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed to me. The good news. What good news? Christ came. He was crucified, buried, and he rose again the third day. That's the good news. Ephesians 1, 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. We one body, are in Christ, in him. And therefore Christ, being that we are in Christ, Christ in, is in us, which is the Holy Spirit. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit in us. Ephesians 3, if you have heard of the dispensation, the stewardship of grace of God, which is given me to you. That's not law. That's the dispensation, a hidden Grace of God, which is given. Colossians 1 is the last one, 25. Wherein I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Which is that? To preach the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. That through grace, not through works, we enter in before God, having the righteousness, what's having faith in that blood. We can sit there, Jonathan, and we, through Christ's righteousness, we can stand before God without judgment. We, we will have on the, the robe dipped in blood of Christ that makes us um, pure white. We have the righteousness of the Lord. That's a, not the law. That's not the Torah. That's not uh, the, the Talmud. This is the the time of grace, because Israel, instead of accepting Christ, rejected. And exactly what they did there in Jerusalem and crucified him, they, when he came in the name of the Father, they rejected him. What do we see in, in the prophecy of Daniel? That he who will come will make a covenant with them, and he will come in their, his, his own name, and Israel will accept him, the man of sin, the perdition, the one who halfway through gets his head blown off and then uh, Satan, the dragon, comes down, incarnates, and then he goes into the temple and desecrates it like uh, Titus did with the, the pig on the second tibble, temple. So I'm raising my voice, so I'm sorry about that, Jonathan. I mean, it, it's there. We see it. I see it. Okay, the the dispensation of grace is to Paul. We are in the dispensation. Paul is important because Paul is a person who has seen both. He has, he knows the Torah. You have to know, as I understand the the readings of the Torah. You have to to become a priest. You have to learn the 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 Book of Moses. You got to go through them and memorize them. 
If you can't memorize it, you can't be a, a, a priest. So he goes all the way up and, and goes under the Gamel. I understand that. But you know what? That all got... <coughs> Excuse me. That all got thrown out. All of it. Why? Because Jesus met him on the road to Damascus. Let me ask you this, Jonathan. Are you the same person now that you met Yeshua than you were before you met him? Or did something change? Me, I was a sinner, drunk, alcoholic. You know what? I'm changed. I'm a different person. My linguistics changed. My uh, understanding changed. I looked for the, I thirsted for the living water, which was every word that came out of his mouth. To sit there and, and then find dispensation and Paul, and it's like a Rosetta Stone. I understand dispensation. I can see Abraham was given the promise. I can see Moses was given the law. And the law was given to show that they, Israel, needed a Savior. Because, as I said, David sinned. What happened? Well, they sit there and they crucified. They should have been looking for him. The, both the Pharisees and the Sadducees should have been looking for him. The Pharisees believe in the resurrection of the dead. That was Jesus. Jesus was the first resurrection. So I can understand why Paul sits there and, is, and somewhat is like, pulled into it because he goes he's resurrected he was dead and yet he's wrecked he's the first fruit well what happened after the resurrection and, and the, the apostles saw him if you read the rest of first uh, corinthians 15 and you go from 5 to 11 over 500 people saw jesus resurrected before he ascended he spent 40 days the same time he did waiting for house of israel to sit there and return and repent Oh my God, we sit there, we killed the Messiah. He was God in the flesh right before us. And they didn't. Why? Because they're going to go into Jacob's trouble, which is fire. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, with the force being Jesus himself, they are going to be tried. The hay, the wood, the stubble is going to be burned up. The gold, the silver, and the gems, those will be saved. Those will be purified. Those are the souls. Those are the things that people do during the time of Jacob's trouble with the last three and a half being great tribulation as never has been on this world nor ever shall be again, said the Lord. Do I believe in the Torah? It's, it's for the Jew. I rightly divide. All the Bible is for me, but not all the Bible is to me. As it's stated in, in Matthew 10, 5, these 12, he said didn't he didn't send us his 12 to the Gentiles, he took Paul the Apostle and made him an Apostle and he made him go to the Gentiles because to make the Jews jealous, they had Christ right there in their, in their midst and they missed it, Jonathan. We are grafted in, the wild branch grafted into the promise where we who were last are now first and they who were first, they're going to be last. They're going into fire. That's what the Petra, the, 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 the Matthew 24, don't come down from the house, but flee into the mountain. Don't come in from the field. Don't get your second coat. Flee. Flee. Why? Because Jerusalem is going to be taken over. Half the city is going to be taken. The women are going to be ravaged, raped. And I'm excited. I'm, that is why. See, I, I get to talking about it, and that's what I'm seeing. That's what the Spirit is showing me. We have a gift called grace. It's not the law. It's not the Talmud. It's grace. That's what Paul was talking to us about. Grace. Paul was wrong. He knew it. He was, That's why he calls himself the chief sinner. I hope this discussion is sit there and has a meaning, has impact. That you see, yes, Gamal was. He sit there and had him on a high horse that he sit there, he could take every one of those apostles and, and take them before the Sanhedrin and convict them and have them sown and put to death. But something happened. Something happened to him like it maybe happened to you and it happened to me. We met Christ at the cross. How I, how he sit there, all the heat and got a fly in the room trying to kill it got my fly squatter 
We'll get him. That's just something to annoy me. Jonathan, your, your heart is there. I'm not into codes. I'm into scripture. I'm into Paul and what Paul did. Five times under the whip. 39 times. So five times 40 would have been 200. Take away five. 195 times that man was beaten with the whip by the Jewish law. Three times, four, three, four times he was shipwrecked. How many times was he thrown in prison? For what? For the law? Or Christ crucified? I think he went and endured all that because he was a follower of Christ. You see, his teaching, his writings show that. He uses the law and he uses the Talmud to show the difference. How oh, Christ is offering something that's never been there. That it was hid. It's now been brought out so it belongs to us. You don't want to accept that? You want to sit there and what? Go back under the law and the burden it had? We have been lifted. That burden has been lifted by Christ. He fulfilled the law. The testator that you sit there, you need it. To sit there to have a savior the savior came the house of israel didn't see him he was the the sacrifice the lamb of god that takes away the sins of the world i'm sorry if i with the with the, the enthusiasm and, the, and the, sometimes I, my voice goes high it's not meant to attack you it's meant to sit there and have a discussion. I hope you sit there and, and you, someone gets you this, or maybe I'll post this under your your the, the video itself that you posted, that you will have a chance to see it. Challenge? No, I don't want to challenge you. I don't want to sit there and debate you, and I don't want to argue with you. What I want to do, Jonathan, is have a discussion that the body of Christ can be edified and glorified. Not by what men did, what the Talmud, not what the Torah taught, that they should have been looking for their Savior to take the, the, and finish the law so that they could live under the grace that was coming, that they should have been first going to the four corners of the world preaching the kingdom of heaven. But that's been put on hold because they rejected him. We, who are Gentiles, got the gift to make the Jew jealous. And you don't see many Jews jealous today, do you? Which shows you they're, they're not even reading the scriptures. They're not looking at Christ. They don't count from Antiochus to the uh, preaching of rebuilding uh, the temple to the time that Jesus of uh, 483 years, that the seven years were 49 years it took to build the, the walls of Jerusalem. And then 62 weeks after that, Jesus on the donkey comes in. When they're looking for the Lion of Judah, they get the Lamb of God. They get the sacrifice that's going to be there. I'm watching the time because I want to sit here and give you as much as you gave me. You gave me about 30 some minutes. But I don't want to sit there and repeat and go over and over. The message is there. It's the gospel of grace. That's what Paul was given. He was given a stewardship of grace. Not of the law. The law condemned us. It convicted us. That we're all guilty of the law. We need a Savior. And behold, the Savior came and died on that cross with his blood. And it's like I said, tomorrow I'm going to do on live stream. Call those who sit there and say, Oh, or Romans 10, 13, just whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Sounds great until you read verse 14. How shall they call on his name in whom they don't believe? And how shall they who... Uh, don't know him, call on him, who are have no information. I, I, I blew that one. I, I had the first one. How can they call on him whom they have not believed? That's verse 14. And then it goes into, they who have no knowledge of him, how can they call on him whom they don't know? And how should they know without a preacher? And what are they doing? They're putting all, all the, the, the apostles to death. They're stoning and killing them. So Israel was given the chance. From what I see, Israel will be the great falling away. And they will take and receive him who comes in his own name. They will make a covenant with him, which will be the Antichrist for seven years. Then they will sit there and see at midpoint when he desecrates the uh, temple. 
that they have made a big, big mistake, and they made the agreement with the with the Antichrist. And then at the end of the, the seven years, Christ will come at the Mount of Olives. It will split north to south, and the Dead Sea will come back to life with the Mediterranean letting in. What do we go by? I go by grace. I don't go by the Talmud. I don't go by the Torah, because the Torah with the Law of Moses and the Ten Commandments, they're put to rest. The, the, the Lamb of God has taken the sins to himself. His blood more in holy and righteous. Nothing we have to do. It's when they sit there and you get born again, people see fruit. Just like Paul, everything Paul did was of Christ. You should see Christ in Paul. We, today, you should see Christ in me. You should see what Christ said. I have shed my blood. I have done it all. All you have to do is have faith in what I did. Okay? The law, all it did was show that we're sinners. The Talmud, that's the teaching of men. Wash your hand. Do it this way. Do it that way. Uh, rub your tummy uh, counterclockwise. Uh, pat your head clockwise. Do it three times and then reverse it. I understand what you're saying, Jonathan. We're not playing a game. We're playing on, on, on trying to get eyes open, ears to hear. Paul is teaching a completely different gospel than what the, the twelve had. Peter kept the covenant of, uh, of the Old Testament at the gate going in. The Pope was Constantine, a Roman emperor. So I understand what you're saying about Rome. He is a Roman. You're bowing to Rome. You're bowing to a man. You're paying homage to a man before God. You have this man who calls himself Father. The Jesus said, Call no man Father, for there is but one Father who is in heaven, your Father. So the, the Romans, yes, are sit there still in charge. They're still ruling. They still got their foot on the, on the neck of the, of the Jew. And that's what they wanted taken off. They wanted a lion of Judah. And he got the Lamb of God, who took away the sins from them, that he then will come at the end of the tribulation of the uh, t Jacob's trouble and set up the kingdom that they will be the center of the world. Jerusalem, his capital, he was him sitting on the throne of David, ruling the nation. But I don't want to go on and on. I sit here. I understand. I've read. I've created the book. The Apostle Paul by John Paul. I understand what you're saying, sir. I believe it, what you're saying. But I also see that Paul is teaching us a completely different gospel that was hid. He's talking about a, a time when we're going to be snatched out. That by faith in Christ alone, faith in God, do you have faith in God? That God has done it. God planned it. God fulfilled it. And now God is waiting as long as he can for as many as he can where the servants go into the highways and the byways to bring in as many as he can into the house of the Lord for the wedding supper of the Lamb is at hand. I pray with Sitter that you take this in, in, in good uh, regard. I lift you up. I praise God that you're out there proclaiming, looking for the secrets of God with your code searching. But sometimes, Jonathan, it sits there it's right in your face. It, it sits there it's just, listen to what Paul is talking. Paul is talking about a completely different gospel. He's not talking about the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. He's talking about the gospel of grace that's going to end. And then everything is going to be turned back to the house of Israel to get Israel to see that they're going to make a covenant with a man of sin and their sister, their fall away will be them making that covenant. Shalom, my brother. May this peace and the glory and the grace of Christ, our Lord, who died on the cross, who shed his blood, was buried and rose again, that his blood calls to as many who will listen and hear, come in. For the time of uh, Jacob's trouble is getting ready, and you do not have to go through Jacob's trouble. It's for Israel and for those who reject. Those who totally reject. You can come out and go through uh, the portal, the door when it opens. When Jesus comes and the, the first Thessalonians and the dead in Christ rise first. 
then we who are alive shall meet them in the air, having put on robes dipped in the blood of Christ and the righteousness of him upon us, that God sees the righteousness of his Son, that we are able to enter in, not by works, but by grace. That is what Paul teaches. That's what should be important, Jonathan. 